If you like our video, click the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses and training materials, visit us at teachucomp.com. To create a customer invoice, either click the Create Invoice link under the Action column for the Customers row in the Customers page, or click the plus new button in the navigation bar, and then click the Invoice link under the Customers heading in the drop-down menu that appears. In the Invoice window that then opens, enter the customer information needed to invoice the customer. To choose a customer, select one from the Customer drop-down in the upper left corner of the window. If selecting an existing customer's record, their information then populates the other fields within this form based on what you entered when you created the customer's record. Alternatively, you can type a customer's name or select the Add New Choice from this drop-down to quickly add a new customer. To the right of the Customer drop-down is an email field. This field is populated with the customer's email address if you entered it when creating the customer's record. You can enter an email here if you didn't enter it when you created the customer or if adding a customer on the fly. If needed to send copies of this invoice to others, click the CC BCC link by this field to show additional CC and BCC fields in a drop-down menu. Then enter the email addresses into these fields as needed and click the Done button. To mark this invoice as an invoice to save but email later, check the Send Later checkbox below the email field. If you already enabled online payments for invoices in QuickBooks Online, check the Cards and or Bank Transfer checkboxes under the Online Payment label to the right as needed to enable the respective online payment method. Note that you must first have online payments enabled through QuickBooks Online before you can use these. If interested in enabling online payment in QuickBooks Online, you can click the adjacent Get Set Up link to set this up with QuickBooks Online. The Billing Address field is populated with the customer's address. If creating a new customer, you can enter their billing address here. To the right, the customer's default terms appear in the Terms drop-down and you can change this if needed. The Invoice Date shows the current date by default. If needed, you can click this field to select another date from the calendar drop-down that appears. The due date field is calculated based on the selected terms you chose. However, you can also click into this field to select a date if needed. Below these fields, if you have shipping enabled, enter the shipping information into the shipping to, ship via, shipping date, and tracking number fields that appear. The shipping to field shows the customer's default shipping address if you entered that when you created the selected customer's record. If you enabled custom fields, then also enter any custom field data into those fields in the invoice if needed. At the far right side of the window, the invoice number field shows the next highest available invoice number. If you enabled custom transaction numbers in sales forms, then you can change this if needed. If you enabled location tracking, a location drop-down also appears here. If you enabled class tracking on a transaction level, then a class drop-down also appears here. The Location of Sale field shows your company's default sales address. You can change this if needed. To add a tag to this transaction, click into the Tags field and then select a tag from the menu of Tag Choices. Repeat as needed to apply tags from any relevant tag groups you have created. Alternatively, to add a new tag, type the tag's name, select it from the Add Choice in the drop-down menu that then appears, and follow the on-screen prompts to add it to a new tag group for reporting purposes. The next area is the Line Items area where you enter the products and or services to invoice. If you enabled service dates in sales forms, you can select the service date of services provided from the service date column. To select an existing item from the products and services list, click into the product service column and then select the item from the drop-down menu. If SKUs are enabled, the item SKU appears in the SKU column. Its description appears in the description column. You can also type a description here if desired. Enter the quantity of the product bought or service provided by typing it into the quantity field labeled QTY. 
The rate for the product or service per quantity unit appears in the rate field. You can change it if needed. The quantity field is multiplied by the rate field to show the total amount for the line item in the amount field. If entering a product or service without a rate or a quantity, you can simply enter the total amount into the amount field if needed. If the product or service is taxable, ensure that the tax field checkbox for the line item is checked. If classes are enabled and assigned by one to each row in transaction forms, then you can select a class from the class dropdown that appears in this row. After entering the first line item, continue entering line items until you enter all the line items needed for the invoice. At the left end of each line item row is a selection handle. To change the order of the line items, roll your mouse pointer over this handle until it turns into a four-pointed crossed arrow. Then click and drag the line item up or down and release it to reorganize the line items if needed. To delete a line item, click the Delete button at the right end of the line item row to delete. To add a new line item row, click into the bottom line item row to automatically add a new row. Alternatively, to add four new rows at once, click the Add Lines button under the line items area. To delete all line items, click the Clear All Lines button in this same location. To add a subtotal to the invoice, select the row above where you want to insert the subtotal row. Then click the Add Subtotal button to add a subtotal line below the currently selected row. You can add as many subtotal lines as the invoice requires. To enter a message to show on the invoice, type it into the Message on Invoice field. To enter a message that appears for this invoice in the customer's statement, type it into the Message on Statement field. In the lower left corner of the invoice is the Attachments field, which lets you attach a file to the invoice. You can drag or drop files onto this field, or click the field's name or icon to open a file upload dialog box that you can use to browse for and then select the file to attach. Note the 20 megabyte file attachment size limit. In the lower right corner of the invoice is the subtotal, taxable subtotal, sales tax, discount, shipping and tax on shipping, total, deposit, and balance due information depending on which sales form features you enabled. The Select Tax Rate drop-down lets you select either the default based on location choice if using the Auto Sales Tax feature or select a custom sales tax rate if you created those. Based on your selection, the sales tax to collect appears to the right. If using the Auto Sales Tax and the Based on Location choice, then you can click the See the Math link under the Sales Tax Amount to see the sales tax information and calculations, and correct it if needed, in the Let's Calculate Your Tax Rate pane that appears at the right side of the window. We'll discuss this pane in detail in a later lesson in this chapter. For now, note that if you need to override the automatic sales tax calculation, you can click the Override This Amount link in this pane's lower right corner to open a section at the bottom of the pane that lets you enter either a new rate or amount to charge for sales tax, and then select a reason from the drop-down. Then click the adjacent Confirm button to confirm the override. You can then close the pane by clicking the Close button in its lower right corner. Alternatively, to apply a custom sales tax rate if you created one, simply select the sales tax rate from the Select Tax Rate drop-down. The amount of sales tax to collect then appears in a field to the right, which you can change if needed. On a related note, if you enabled a discount field in your sales forms, you can use the Discount drop-down that appears next to the Select Tax Rate drop-down to select either the Discount Percent or Discount Value choice. Then enter the percentage or amount into the field to the right. The discount is related to sales tax because you can click the button that looks like up and down arrows in a blue circle to the left of the sales tax rate and discount fields to switch the order of the two fields in the invoice each time you click it. Doing this changes whether the discount is applied after sales tax is calculated or before sales tax is calculated based on the order in which the fields appear in the invoice. 
If shipping is enabled, you can enter the amount of shipping into the shipping field. The tax on shipping field, if enabled, shows the sales tax on the shipping. The total field shows the invoice total amount. If enabled to record an amount paid as a deposit at the time of invoicing, enter the amount into the deposit field. The balance due field shows the remaining balance due less the deposit. The toolbar that appears at the bottom of the invoice lists the actions you can perform on an invoice. You will see different options here when creating a new invoice versus opening an existing invoice. When creating a new invoice, you will see the Cancel and Clear buttons at the left side of the toolbar. Clicking Cancel cancels the invoice creation. Clicking Clear clears all the fields but keeps the window open. In the middle of the toolbar are the Printer Preview, Make Recurring, and Customize buttons. Clicking the Print or Preview button shows a pop-up menu that lets you check a Print Later checkbox or click either the Print or Preview or print packing slip commands. Checking the print later checkbox lets you filter by that delivery method if you batch print invoices later. Clicking the print or preview command saves the invoice and opens a window that shows the invoice as a PDF and lets you preview or print it. Clicking the print packing slip command saves the invoice and creates a packing slip from the invoice and shows it as a PDF so you can print it. Clicking the make recurring button opens the recurring invoice window. This window lets you create a recurring invoice, which is discussed in a separate lesson. You can click the Cancel button in the toolbar to cancel the recurring invoice and return to the main invoice screen. Clicking the Customize command in the toolbar lets you select a different invoice template to use, edit the current invoice template, or create a new invoice template by selecting a command in the pop-up menu that appears. Creating form templates is discussed in a separate lesson. After creating the invoice, you can then click the Save button in the toolbar to save it. You can also directly click the Save and Send button at the right end of the toolbar to save and send the invoice by email, or click its drop-down arrow, and then click either the Save and New, Save and Close, or Save and Share Link commands. Clicking the Save and New command saves the invoice and creates a new invoice. Clicking the Save and Close command saves the invoice and closes the invoice window. If enabled, clicking the Save and Share Link command saves the invoice and sends the link to the online invoice by email to the customer's email address. Note that this command only appears if you selected the online delivery choice from the additional email options for invoices drop-down within the online delivery section of the Sales Menu category within the Account and Settings window, as shown earlier in this course. After saving an invoice, a new More button also appears in the toolbar at the bottom of the invoice. Clicking this button shows commands for Copy to copy the invoice, Void to void the invoice, Delete to delete the invoice, Transaction Journal to open a report that lists the accounts and credit and debit amounts for the invoice, and Audit History which shows an audit history of the invoice. You can click any of these actions to perform the related activity. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. Get ad-free courses at teachucomp.com.